Hello students, welcome to ECLMO Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed a laboratory and we defined a laboratory as a special room which is equipped and designed for scientific research. We also looked at different laboratory rules that must be followed while you are in a lab. Now, students who don't follow the laboratory rules are prone to common accidents in the lab. That's what we are going to discuss in this lesson. My name is Albert. I hope you are enjoying the learning. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to state five common accidents and the injuries in the laboratory. Then explain the causes of the accidents in the laboratory. And then finally, state the action to be taken by a student in case of an accident or injury in the laboratory. So where we are going to learn uh, the common accidents in the lab, I want you to be very keen on the major accidents and injuries in the laboratory. And in every accident or injury, I want you to be keen on what can cause that injury or that accident. And after knowing what causes those accidents and injuries, I want you to be able to identify or uh, acknowledge the action that must be taken by a student in case of an accident. So in physics laboratory, we have five common injuries and accidents, and this include one, we have cuts, then we have burns, number two, number three, we have poisoning, then number four, we have electric shock, and then number five, we have eye damage. Now, who can tell me what causes cuts? What about burns, poisoning, electric shock, and eye damage? The first accident or injury in the laboratory is cuts, and the cuts might result from poor handling of glass apparatus or poor handling of cutting tools like razor and scalpels. So in case of the cut leading to bleeding, then the student must apply pressure or compress the area where the cut is to make sure that the blood which might be contaminated with chemicals moves out and then the student should do proper dressing and then seek medical attention. The second common injury and accident in the laboratory is burns and burns might result from naked flames uh, in chemistry, you discussed flames and you were told non-luminous flame. Non-luminous flame is a very hot and almost invisible flame. So in case we have an non-luminous flame in the laboratory and you are careless, then it might result into a burn. And sometimes burns might be caused by splash of concentrated acids and bases. As we mentioned in the last lesson, in the laboratory we have very dangerous chemicals, especially acids and bases. When they are highly concentrated, they can burn seriously. So what you do immediately after a burn accident has taken place, then you flush cold water over the affected area to cool it. So immediately you are burned either by a flame or a concentrated acid or a base, what you do, you flush cold water through that place to cool it. So in case we have a burn from an acid, you can apply or treat it with sodium hydrogen carbonate. Sodium hydrogen carbonate is a base, is a base. Then in that case, uh, a neutralization reaction will take place. Remember from your chemistry, you were told when acids react with bases, they will form salt, which is neutral, and water, which is also neutral, and these two are harmless. So in case you get a burn from an acid, you apply a base to form harmless salt and water, and in case you get a burn from concentrated base, 
you apply an acid but in this case you will apply a weak a weak acid like vinegar to neutralize the base and form harmless salt and water here you are reminded that in case a burn result into a brister it's not advisable to break the brister since the fluid inside the brister protects your body from infections so if a brister breaks clean the area with clean water and then dress it immediately to avoid infections but if the brister has not been broken then leave it like that because the fluid inside a brister is very important and it protects your skin from infection the third accident and injury in the laboratory is poisoning and poisoning might result from inhaling inhaling poisonous fumes or even swallowing poisonous chemicals and materials this one is prone to those students who don't follow laboratory rules and they come inside the laboratory with food so sometimes your food might get contaminated with chemicals and it might result to poisoning as an accident in the laboratory so in case this happens poisoning agent should be noted and then urgent medical assistance is sought so in case you get poisoned the first thing you do is to identify the poisoning agent the, the, the chemical that you swallowed or the gas or the fumes that you inhaled and then immediately you notice them you seek immediate medical attention for your life to be saved the fourth common accident in a physics laboratory is electric shock an electric shock may result from touching exposed wires or even using a fault electrical appliance the first thing to do is cutting off the current so in case of an accident involving electric shock the first thing to do is cutting off a uh, the electric current remember we said as one of the laboratory rules you must identify the position of the electric switches and water taps so in case of an accident from electric shock you have to put off the main switch and then in that case you could have turned off the current and then the second move that you can do is move the victim away from the source using a dry non-conducting Material made of plastic or wood so this process of moving the victim should come after you have switched off the main switch don't rush to push someone out of the source of the electric shock before you switch off your main switch then the fifth uh, common accident in a laboratory is eye damage and eye damage may be caused by pits of solids or dangerous chemicals splashing into the eye this is common especially when students look at reactants or chemicals directly and close to the apparatus when they are conducting uh, scientific research so in case of this eye damage and in case of irritating chemicals then wash your eye with a lot of clean water so in case of splash of bits of solids or dangerous chemicals then a student should take an action of washing the eye with clean water to reduce the concentration of those chemicals and then you seek medical attention so that you save your eye so students we have looked at different common accidents in the laboratory and we have seen that those accidents can be avoided by keenly following the laboratory rules some of those common accidents include cuts which can be caused by scalpels or cutting tools or even uh, poor handling of glass apparatus then we have burns which can be caused by naked flames or even acids and bases which are strong then we have eye damage eye damage which can be caused by splash of chemicals or solid apparatus into the eye then we looked at poisoning poisoning can be caused 
by swallowing or inhaling poisonous gases. And then finally, we looked at the electric shocks. Electric shocks, electric shocks, which can be caused by using fault appliances or touching naked wires. So that is the end of our lesson today and the end of the first topic of Form 1. In the next lesson, we are going to discuss the second topic of Form 1, Measurement 1. So welcome to ECLIMU Learning Simplified.